Welcome to the Victorious Life TV broadcast. I'm Lisa Boldo, and as always, I am just so excited to be here with you tonight. I believe that tonight's broadcast is just going to be a tremendous blessing, so I know you're going to want to share it with people, but really pay attention tonight because I'm going to be talking about how to walk in dominion and set people free. That means setting you free too, not just other people. And this is God's will. So I just want to say a, a quick prayer and we're going to dive right in. And just know I see you guys jumping on, so it's wonderful to see you. So hello. <laughs> so Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that your word is truth. Father, I pray, Lord, that as your word goes forth tonight, Lord, that it will just bless the viewer, Lord, that it will be received, Lord, with gladness, and that the enemy will not come and steal this word away, Lord, but that it will be planted deeply within the viewer's heart, Lord God. I say the viewer, the hearer, everyone under the sound of my voice, those who are live and those who will watch the replay, and just forevermore, whoever hears this message tonight. Lord, I just want to thank you for it. We thank you, Lord, and we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So welcome again to the broadcast. And, you know, I talk about sometimes, you know, the assignment that God's given me, which is to help the multitudes to live in victory. The Lord specifically showed me focus on the multitudes, right? And to use the internet to do it. And the funny thing is, not funny, but the amazing thing is the Lord said this to me, gosh, I think like six years ago, but sometimes he gives you a word and it's for the future. So praise the Lord. I'm just honored that you're here with me tonight and that I could be here with you. So I'm talking about what it means to walk in dominion and authority. And, you know, just right away and, and straight away, God showed me last week that there were three things and just like three things like you have these three things you can walk in dominion and authority and I thought this is awesome and so this is what I wanted to share with you tonight and so the Lord said to me he showed me he said and this was actually during worship while I was at church last Sunday the Lord just showed these things to me he said to me you have my word which is truth right and the word of God is Jesus he said you have my word you have my name and you have my spirit. Whoa. And I was like, wow, Lord, you know, it's like we know this, but we don't really sometimes stop to think about it. And so this is the thing. In order to walk in, um, you know, dominion and authority, and it's not your authority. Just remember, this is Jesus's authority. And I'm going to get, you know, more into that. But you've got to know who you are in Christ. And you've got to understand that as a believer, we have a responsibility as believers to continue the work that Jesus started here on this earth, right? And then he passed it on to the disciples, not just them, but there were many. And then all the ones that would come after them. That's you and me today. So glory to God. And you've got to think about what was Jesus's ministry while he was here on the earth? What did he do? More than anything, he went around, you know, doing good, healing everyone, all who were oppressed of the devil, right? Destroying the works of the devil, healing those who were sick. And mm, I'm just, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I just, you know, I'm really excited. So, but this is what God said to me. Number one, his word. I'm diving right in because it seems like we just run, we run out of time and I want to be able to pray for you guys later. I'm just really excited. So his word, what does his word say? Well, in particular, and, and I talk about healing really more than anything because so many around us are sick, right? Sick, dying, and it, it's just, it just doesn't have to be that way, you know? And for too long, I, you know, we've just, we've been taught incorrectly. And Jesus didn't say pray for the sick, he said heal them. And if the thing is, is Jesus is our model, we have to look at how did he do it? How did he do it? right? He did it with a word. Come out. Be healed, right? And we have, he's told us to do the same thing. So, okay, what does his word say? His word says, by his stripes, you were healed. 
Isaiah 53, 5 and 1 Peter 2, 24. You can look them up. Isaiah 53, 5 and 1 Peter 2, 24. By his stripes, you were healed. You are healed. And if you are healed, that is forever. It's present tense and it's forever because he already paid the price. Mm, so good, right? You know, when Gabriel the angel came to Mary and said, you're going to have a son, you're going to call him Jesus. And, you know, what did Mary do, right? She didn't know a man yet. So she asked, you know, how's this going to be? Because I don't know a man yet. You know, I haven't since I haven't known a man. But how did she conclude? You know what she said to the angel? She said, she said, be it unto me according to thy word. That's what she said. That's how she left it. The handmaiden of the Lord, you know, I'm here. Be it unto me according to thy word. Guess what? That's how we need to talk to God. We need to say, Lord, your word says, by your stripes, I am healed. So be it unto me according to thy word in your precious name, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Boom. I am telling you, you will see healings happen. That's what happened to me. If you don't know the story, you know, about the cyst that I had on my wrist that was a root, I'm telling you, be it unto me according to thy word. Mm. Okay, so that's how we need to respond. Jesus said in Matthew 10, and I said this before, he said, go and heal the sick. He didn't say pray for them. He said, go and heal them. Why are God's people so afraid to step out and go and minister healing to the sick? He said, you will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Lord, your word says... I, sh I shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. They shall recover. In Right? That's his word. We have his word. In your name, Lord. In Jesus' name. Mm. Okay. All right. Mm. Okay. But why are God's people so afraid to get out and minister? Well, first of all, I believe that we've just been taught incorrectly. We're still saying, God, please, God, please heal this person. Get on a prayer chain. Heal them. Let's all get together. Let's pray and maybe God will move. That's not what get God, gets God to move. That's not how, how it happens, you know? That's not how people get healed. And then when people don't get healed, it's, oh, well, maybe it wasn't God's will and maybe... You know what? It's always God's will to heal. How do I know that? Because he already took the stripes, right? And he said, go, heal them in my name. Oh my gosh. You know, the word is so full of scriptures, right? That, that back all of this up. And, you know, so I'm just bringing you a few tonight, but you get into God's word and you will see this for yourself. It's Mm, it's awesome. So, and I believe, you know, another reason that God's people don't pray for the sick or I minister healing. I like to say minister healing, but you know, pray for the sick. I'm saying minister healing to the sick, you know, where you command it and boom, it's, it's got to happen just like Jesus did. We are to model Jesus. But a lot of times I believe, you know, it's because we're afraid of looking foolish, right? Well, what happens if it doesn't work? That's doubt and unbelief. We got to stay on his word. Lord, your word says and make a decision that we're just going to stand on it no matter what, no matter what. And you know something, even Lazarus, he died, right? But Jesus said, this will not end in death. Lazarus sickness will not end in death. Well, guess what? He died, but it didn't end in death because he was resurrected. Oh, I love that, right? So you stand no matter what you stand, you stand, you stand. Okay. Okay, so another reason is that, that God's people aren't ministering healing to the sick is because they're not sure that it's God's will. And like I said, it's already proven in the Bible. He took the stripes for our healing. And you know what? I, I just want to say this. You know, if you believe that you're saved, right? Why are you saved? Because Jesus went to the cross and he died and was resurrected, right? So you could be born again. But guess what? That's not where healing came from. Jesus took our sins on the cross. He bore our sins, right? But he was the whipping post, the stripes, it says in particular. And there were two separate events. First came the stripes. So first came the healing, right? The first came the healing. And then because, you know, he, he died and was resurrected, he, you know, he took the sins of the whole world on him, but he also took 
uh, the, the sickness of the whole world on him with those stripes. And that's why by his stripes, you're healed. So if he, just think of this, if he had taken the stripes, but he didn't, you know, take the sins, we couldn't be born again, but we could be healed, right? I'm telling you, this is Bible, but thank God, thank you, Lord. He did both. He did both. So we've got, we've got the best of everything. Jesus is so amazing. Okay. The, you've got to realize too, that Jesus healed them all, right? The only ones that he didn't heal were the ones who didn't believe and didn't come to him because they didn't believe. But everyone that came to him, it says he healed them all all. He never stopped and said, well, you've got a generational curse. No, your sins are too big. No, you know, you're, you're, you got too much going on. He never, ever did that. He healed them all, all who came to him, right? And so he tells us, heal them and tell them. Like, in other words, if someone is an unbeliever, they're not going to have faith to be healed. And you know something? It says that the signs follow the believer, not the person who doesn't even know to believe, right? Listen, we do have to stop putting conditions. You know, God's been showing me this, oh my gosh, like uh, amazing, that it's not up to the person. It's great if they agree with you, but you know what? It's, it's our responsibility as believers because the signs follow the believer, not the person in front of us. Listen, if someone's dead, they don't have faith, right? For, for them to be resurrected. It's your faith. It's my faith as a believer. The responsibility, you know, it, it, listen, the Holy Spirit is going to work with us, but we got to step out and do it. You know, it reminds me of um, last week, uh, my husband and I, we were watching Iron Man, right? With Robert Downey Jr. And I remember he like, stepped out like he just jumped and then the suit his iron man suit came flying and would like get to you know come on him and i'm just saying you know when you step out in faith to do what god's said to do the holy spirit's gonna work with you he's not gonna leave you hanging but you gotta step out and say lord i'm your vessel be it according to your word you know be uh, according to your word be it done unto me you said i will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so you know what i'm going in your name by your spirit and boom it's 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 gotta happen but not saying god please 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 oh that's not the way to get it done that's not what jesus did and that's not what we're to do okay you got to understand too that god's not going to say no to what he's already said yes to okay his word says go and heal the sick no exceptions, go and heal them. Now, here's the thing. He also said, and, you know, then disciple them, right? Now, maybe you're not, if you're not the one to disciple them or to teach them to walk in the ways of God, right? Because, okay, let me back up a little bit. When Jesus would heal someone, right, sometimes he would say to them, your sins are forgiven. So the forgiveness of sins came with the, the, the healing, right? He healed them. He healed them all. He healed them. And if he healed them, they were healed, right? But here's the thing. Then he gave them an, an opportunity to now start walking with God, okay? It's because an unbeliever doesn't know that they need to believe. And if you're going to sit there and say, well, you know, you're an unbeliever. You don't believe. That's never going to happen. That's not going to work. We are to be lights in the darkness. We're to bring healing to them. That's a sign to them that God loves them. And it's the goodness of God that brings people to repentance, right? And to trust in him and to say, whoa, I got to know more about this. You know, I, I need to change my life around. Okay. So, okay. So let's see, where am I here? Boy, I, mm, I just get really excited about this, but it's great. So the point is Jesus healed them all. He didn't make exceptions. You can't, but he did say, now, sometimes he would say, your sins are forgiven you. Go and sin no more, right? Uh, to the, to the one guy in the temple, he said, now he said, you are, you see that you're healed. He said, now stop sinning unless something worse 
happens to you. Why? Because there's a scripture in the Bible and you can, you know, Google and it says, I don't have it right in front of me, but it says that when a spirit is cast out of someone, that spirit goes looking for rest and it will come back to see if that person, you know, has been basically what it says is that person, the meaning of it is he will, it'll, the spirit will come back and see if that person is swept, like they're still empty because then that spirit can come back with seven other wicked ones. Or if they're filled with God, then it, then it won't come back. It can't come back because it's occupied. There's a no occu, you know, uh, an occupied sign there. Does, I hope that makes sense. Okay. But we are to, to set people free. Okay. And we've, we, we can do this. So, all right. This is what Jesus did when he was on the earth, and this is what we're called to do. We're called to continue the ministry of Jesus, okay? So healing is a sign, right, to, to unbelievers, right, that they need to change and they need to... Now, if you're not in a position, this is what I started to say, to minister to them or to um, disciple them, point them to someone who can you know, whether it's if you're in a spirit-filled ch filled church, invite them, turn them. You know, there's tons of videos. I've got videos. There, there's people on the internet. Pastor Steve Hannett, you know, with Abundant Grace. Um, you know, uh, his stuff is on Facebook every Sunday and YouTube. And So I'm just saying, you don't have to be the one. If you can, great. Be an example, though, to them of how to walk with the Lord. Here's another thing you can do is as soon as someone gets set free, Tell them it's the goodness of God. And if they say, well, where do I start? You know, I love the book of John. I always say, you know, tell people if they want to know Jesus, read the book of John. And then, but here's, here's another um, thing you could do. It'd be really good. Tell them, read the book of James because it's short, but it tells you this is how you need to live. It's awesome. Read the book of James and then read the book of John. Okay. Cause then, you know, it, cause they got to start getting their life in order. You know what I mean? Okay. So Matthew 5, 44, 45 says, Jesus said, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Listen to this, that you may be sons of your father in heaven. He causes the sun, right? The sun that's shining in the sky to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. So here's the thing, right? Pray for your enemies, you know, and this is what the Lord showed me because it was like, Man, you know, sometimes you're just like, oh, no, you got to die to self, right? Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you got to pick up your cross and, you know, walk with me. That means be, die to self, refusing to get offended, praying for your enemies, praying that their eyes would be open to the truth and even interceding for them. Devil in Jesus name, leave them in Jesus name. I call them, a, you know, a, call things that be not as though they were, right? Lord, I thank you. I, I ask, Lord, that you open the eyes of their understanding and I command them to be healed head to toe in Jesus' name. And you know what? Wait and see what happens. They may just call you the next day and say, you know what? I was all wrong about you. I am so sorry. You know, that you can, you know, intercede for. Or if somebody's not right in front of you or you don't have access to them through the internet or whatever, you know, or the phone, you can intercede for them and command and that they be healed even, you know, from a distance. Hmm. In the spirit, you know, there's all these teachings. There is time and distance. No, there isn't. There isn't. In the spirit, you can take care of some things. It's, it's awesome. But we do need to be lights shining in the dark. And as much as we can, either, you know, lay hands on a person or speak to them, you know, through the internet or the internet's great. I mean, this is so great that we can do this now, you know, or speak to them on the phone where they can hear the sound of your voice, right? Jesus, sometimes, you know, he sent his word, boom, they were healed. Okay. So according to your word, Lord, be it done unto me. I love that. Okay. And then, okay. Uh, let's see. Jesus said in John 14, 12, 13, 12 and 13, in solemn truth, I tell you, anyone believing in me shall do the same miracles I have done and even greater ones because I'm going to be with the Father. You can ask him for anything using my name and I will do it. For this will bring praise to the Father because of what I, the Son, will do for you. Whew, that's the Living Bible. Okay, 
the second thing, my gosh, I can't believe I'm only on the second thing. He said, you have my name, right? It's faith in the name of Jesus because his name is the authority. His name, it's faith in the name of Jesus that is the authority to do the works that Jesus did, right? Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says he told his disciples, I have been given all, all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, therefore, therefore means because, like why? Because I've been given all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, because of that, go and make disciples in all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and then teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. Okay, but what are all the commands that Jesus gave us? Love God, love your neighbors yourself. Boom, that's it. Go and heal the sick. You, they need to know what they can do because we need to bring them to Christ, get them filled with the Holy Spirit, and help them to renew their minds because that's the only way transformation comes. You got to renew your mind with the word of God. You want inner healing, you know, with relationships and all that, die to self. Because here's the thing. If you die to self, you make it a practice to start practicing, not getting offended, not retaliating when someone says something to you. Guess what? But instead, go pray for them. Go intercede for them. Command the devil to leave. In Jesus' name, you cannot have that one. You know, I, I declare they're a mighty man or woman of God. And Lord, I thank you right now that, and I call them healed. In Jesus' name, I command them to be healed. And you know something? Okay, I just got off on a tangent there. Well, the, the point of me saying that was, let me go back and see. Um, oh, he said, love your neighbor, love yourself, uh, love your, love God and love your neighbor as yourself, right? So where was I going with that? Oh my goodness, this was, this was important. Okay, hold on. Uh, teach them to obey. Yeah, so you've got to help them to get to renew their minds be right away because that's how transformation comes. You cast the devil out of somebody. You don't want that thing coming back, you know, with some. Now, should you still do it? Yes, because you're giving them a chance to see God's goodness. Okay, so, and then the last thing he said there was, Jesus said, and be sure of this, that I am with you always, even to the end of the world or the age, right? And then in Acts 3.1, the lame beggar, I just, I have to go here for a minute. So Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at the ninth hour, right? So they were going up to pray. Guess what? They weren't prayed up. They were just walking in God's goodness, right? They were going to pray. They hadn't prayed yet, right? They were going up. Okay, and a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that's called Beautiful, to ask alms, right, or money of those entering. So seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John. They both looked at him and said, look at us. They didn't say, brother, you got to look up to Jesus, right? No, they said, look at us, because you have the Holy Spirit in you. I'm just saying, right? He said, and he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no gold and silver, but what I do have, I give you in the name, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right? Rise up and walk. It was a command. He didn't say, oh, Lord Jesus, heal this man. No, he gave the command in the name of Jesus. That's what we're supposed to do, okay? And then it says, and then he, Peter, took the man, right, by the right hand and raised him up. That's under the... You know, once you're, you're prayed for somebody or ministered healing to them, have them tell them to do something they couldn't do before or help them if they're there with you. You're praying for somebody in a wheelchair. I know legalities and all that stuff, but at least, you know, go to help them up. How are, listen, if they don't demonstrate an action to put what you just did it, they're never going to know if they're healed. And, and chances are they, they're going to be healed. Okay, so... Because that only because that's God's word. That's not my opinion. It's the word of God. Okay. And leaping up, he stood up and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one, right? They recognized him as the one who was lame and, oh, you know, always asking for alms. And they were filled with wonder 
and amazement at what had happened because healing is a sign. It's a wonder. People will be like, oh my gosh, what, right? But this should be the norm for believers. Okay. And then, um, okay. And then while he clung to Peter and John, all the people utterly astounded ran over to Peter and John as if it was by their own power that they did this. And this is what Peter said. He said, why are you looking at us as though by our own power we, we made this man to walk, right? That he got healed. He said, no. He, and then he explained about Jesus, how they crucified him. He said in verse 16, and his name, but by faith in his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given this man this perfect health in the presence of you all. Mm. Right? So you just got to remember, Jesus healed everybody, and he didn't go back to the sins of the forefathers and say, well, you got all this generational stuff on you. He didn't do that. Listen, I know there's a lot of teachings out there about generational curses, and that's for another day, but I'm going to here to tell you right now, my friend, if you are born again and Jesus Christ is your Lord, you have no generational curse. Jesus became the curse for you, right? Because the Bible says cursed is every man that hangs on a tree. Jesus took the curse for you. You have no more curse. There is no curse there. Your generational line goes back to Jesus and that's it. Jesus, that's it. Uh, um, this is Bible. This is truth. Okay. So Okay, and that's according to Galatians 3.13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. You receive this by putting your faith in Jesus, and there is no generational curse for you. Okay? Okay. And if you say, yeah, but all this stuff is still happening. This happened to my grandmother. Now it's happening to me. That's because you believe it. You haven't renewed your mind to the truth of God's word yet. And, you know, the Lord said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. You know what that means? Whatever you allow on earth, I'm allowing. You can't allow it. Don't allow it. You've got the word of God, his name, and his spirit. Okay, I got to move because we only have a couple minutes here. Okay, so just remember, <laughs> when you were born again, your spirit was recreated. You had a new birth. You are a species of being that has never existed before. The old you has passed away. You have been made brand new, right? The Holy Spirit now came to reside in you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all in one. And now it's time to get in God's word because your mind has to catch up, right? Your spirit has been made brand new. Brand new forever. You have been regenerated. That's why you don't have to worry about generational curses. No, no. Jesus became the curse for you. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time on that, but all right. You're going to be transformed as you renew your mind with the word. Okay, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? With the word of God, so that you may prove what is the will of God, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Okay, and then number three, I got to go fast. <laughs> you have my spirit, he said. The Holy Spirit lives in you. Ephesians 1.13, it says, and in him, in who? In Christ, right? You were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, having heard and believed the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. 1 Corinthians 6.17 says, he who is joined, the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. That's awesome. Okay, that's where your power comes from. The authority comes from his name, right? You have his word, you have the truth, you have his name, you have his authority, and then you have his spirit, which is the power, boom, right? Mm. Okay, Colossians 1.27 talks about the mystery that was hidden for ages um, and generations. So the mystery... Uh, right in the mist, the Bible talks about the mystery that was hidden for ages and generations, but is now revealed to his saints. That's you and me. Cause once we're born again, we're no longer called sinners, but saints. Right. And it says that the, the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, 
the hope of glory. Colossians 1.27, read that, right? To whom God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery. Glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay. Oh my gosh, we are out of time. You know what? We're out of time. Is it okay if I keep going for like five more minutes? I need to keep going. Yes? Yes? You guys good? Okay, just five minutes. Bear with me. We're about to close. Acts 10.38 says, You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Healing all. All, all, that's what we're supposed to do, right? Who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. If you have God's Holy Spirit, is God with you? Yeah. Did he say, I'll never leave you? Yes. But he'll always be with you till the end of the age? Yes. So he's with you. He's in you. You have his word. You have his name. You have his spirit. You have everything you need to go and set people free. You are a crime stopper because the enemy is a thief. He comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He has no authority because all authority was given to Jesus in heaven and on earth. So that means the enemy has no authority. He has deception. He lies. That's all he's got, right? And then he'll make you think that he has authority, but he doesn't. He doesn't. He just, he's a thief. He tries to, you know, he just wants to break in and mm, wreak havoc. But we don't have to put up with it. Not even for a minute. Okay. If you're still struggling with depression, look at what's depressing you. Is it a devil? Is it sickness? Is it uh, somebody else's attitude? Is it your own attitude, right? Well, again, I talked about this earlier about dying to self. If you're in a, you know, that's the quickest way to get inner healing is die to self. Because if you die to self, he's going to increase, you're decreasing. More of the Holy Spirit coming out. Mm, that's what we want, right? And you might say, well, easier than done, said than done. Practice. Practice. Yes. Someone said, you're, we are joint heirs with Christ. And that's exactly right. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ, which means we are, our Father wants us to do this. And Jesus he wants us to do the same work that he did. That's what we're called to do, right? As his brothers and sisters. He's our Lord. Okay. Now, um, okay. I said this earlier. As you renew your mind with the word of God, you're going to become more like Jesus. That's just what's going to happen. Okay. So how do you heal the sick in Jesus' name? First, you've got to know that you represent God. You are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. You're here to represent Jesus. Jesus, right? You're here as God's representative on the earth, okay? So you've been given his authority. It's not your authority, just like a police officer. It's not his authority, but it's the city or state, you know, that, that he represents. He has their authority to do what he needs to do to be that crime stopper, right? So we have, uh, Jesus has given us his authority to go and do it. Go and do it, right? Okay, so... All you really need to do is just go over to them. You lay hands on them and you say, by the stripes of Jesus, you're healed. I set you free in the name of Jesus Christ from head to toe. Be healed. And let me tell you something. If there's a devil there, when you say, I set you free, that devil knows you're talking to it. It's got to go. Now you can say, you know, devil go. You can. Now, obviously if you're, if you're, if you're speaking to or ministering healing to a small child or something, you don't want to say like devil and all that stuff. I'm telling you, the enemy knows when you're talking to him, but you, you better be commanding. You know, you got to speak from your spirit, not just from, you know, up here, you got to speak from your spirit mm, and mean it and believe it. And it will drive that thing out. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Just remember too, that healing is a law. It's already done. You know, I've talked about this in prior videos. It it's like gravity. It works the same way for everybody all the time. You've just got to understand that it's already been set in motion. It's a law. So when you speak the word of God now, you know, and I've talked about, you know, repenting. If, if there's a known sin there, yeah, it'd be good to repent for having come into agreement with whatever. But guess what? If someone is an unbeliever, they don't know about all that stuff. You just get them healed because the Holy Spirit's going to work with you. Then 
tell them, you know, you're free now, just like Jesus did. He set them free. But now you need to tell them, listen, you don't want that thing coming back. Because the thing is, you can get them healed, but you can't guarantee that they're going to stay healed. They have a part to do. Okay? They, they have to renew their minds. They've got to get, you know, doing what they need to do. All right. So, um... I'm going to pray for you now, those of you who were just, were like five minutes over, but I want to pray for you. I think we had, um, we had about three good healings on the broadcast. Well, not good healings. Every healing is a, is a good healing, but three reported on last week's broadcast. So I want to, I'm going to minister healing to you right now. And this is good because you're under the sound of my voice and just receive it. Don't pray while I'm speaking, do not pray because it's like a faucet being on and then you turning on a faucet and like there's, you can't receive. Okay. So as I minister, just be quiet and just receive. Okay. You can pray and thank God later. Okay. So I just want to say right now, father, right now, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that your word is truth. And right now to you, the viewer watching and, and to who, whoever you watching in the name of Jesus, according to the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed in Jesus name. I curse sickness in Jesus name. I command it to go. I set you free in Jesus name. And I command, I say, be, be set free right now. And I Speak healing. I command you to be healed from head to toe now in Jesus' mighty name. Now, do something that you couldn't do before. Right now, I'm just seeing like someone's shoulder, like lift it up. Lift it. Lift it. Get up. If you had like a sore ankle, get up. Move it around. Whatever it is that you couldn't do before, do it. And then I really want you to, you know, comment or write our, your testimony because here's the thing. Once you get healed and you know, because if you've got pain and now you don't have pain, you're healed and you need to say, Lord, thank you. And you need to testify to it. That gives God praise and glory. And it lets people know that the power of Jesus to heal is real. It's real. And you don't have to have some formula because the Holy Spirit's power will follow your intention. So you don't have to say like a formula, you know, every time it's be healed, you know, be set free. I set you free in Jesus name, you know, come out, Wh whatever needs to be said, be healed in Jesus name. But you see, mm, and that's what I said to you. So whatever you couldn't do before, do it now and make sure that you uh, report it or send me an email at info at lisabuldo.com. But please, you know, if something happened here tonight to you, which I'm, I'm sure it has for many and it will, then write, comment that, you know, you can do whatever you couldn't do before. Somebody just said, had pressure in my neck, no more pressure. Hallelujah. Yay. Just do it. That's right, John. Okay. So here's the thing too. Um, if you know of someone who is in need of healing, you know what? I have just decided that I'm, I, I'm, I'm taking it on. You know, you can email me at info at lisabuldo.com, include your phone number, and I will be getting in touch with you. Okay. So God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. Make sure you share this on your page. Let's advance the kingdom of God together. You know, this has blessed you. Share it. Share it. It's truth. The truth of God's word needs to be heard around the world. So I love you. I bless you in Jesus. And I'll talk to you soon. All right. Good night.